WWE NXT star Jake Atlas says he doesn't want to be known as the gay wrestler. Kudos to Jake Atlas. The new wrestling star is the first out gay man signed to the sport. But you're not going to watch me because I'm gay. You're going to watch me because I'm good. I, I wish I could pat him on the back. That was pretty dope. This is from People Magazine. June 12th, 2020, this is a story talking about Jake Atlas being a gay wrestler, and they talk a little bit about his mother. So we're going to read this story, and I'm going to give my two cents as we go on. So let's talk about this. When Jake Atlas first reported for training at the WWE facilities in Orlando this past January, the 25-year-old became the first openly gay man signed to the sport. Okay, now, I know a lot of people are thinking, what about Darren Young? Now, I think Darren Young came out after he was signed. I don't think they knew Darren Young was gay. Okay, so I think that's kind of where, it's kind of a delicate situation. And yes, I'm pretty sure, I think Chris Canyon also came out uh, while under contract. So I guess Jake Atlas is the first wrestler they've signed knowing that he was a homosexual. In any event, it doesn't matter. For Atlas, whose real name is Kenny Marquez, wrestling is his destiny. This is the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Atlas says in his in this week's issue of People or B. Atlas gained the WWE's attention when he appeared on the show Undercover Boss as a then unsigned aspiring wrestler who worked part time at a Los Angeles gym. Atlas told WWE's chief brand manager, Stephanie McMahon, that he planned to be the first out gay male wrestler. He had been planning on saying that for more than 10 years. OK. So he he found Stephanie McMahon somehow. I know she did Undercover Boss. So, okay. He, it's just a, a coincidence, a happenstance, a happy accident. Wink, wink. Atlas's mother grew up in Mexico and imbued her own love of Lucha Libre into her two sons. Atlas la latched onto it and was eventually able to pivot his cheerleading and tumbling skills into wrestling. So he's Mexican. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Nobody talks about him being Mexican. <laughs> but for most of his life, he wasn't sure being gay and being a professional wrestler was compatible. In fact, he wasn't even sure being gay and a member of his family was compatible. I came out when I was 15, he remembers. I didn't tell a friend. I went straight to my mom. When I told her was the first time I that I uttered the word gay. I didn't even say bisexual because I knew I had been lying to myself. I was crying, and I even said the words, I know this is wrong, but I'm gay. Hmm, I know this is wrong. By that point, his mother was crying too. I know that was, I know that more than anything, she was crying out of disappointment, and she brought religion into it. It was a difficult moment, said Atlas. Okay, so his mother's Mexican, and Mexicans, like 76% of Mexicans are Catholic. So, yeah. This makes sense. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. You know, Mexicans, you know, the Santa Muerte and, you know, you know, Mary Magdalene and yeah. Yeah. Mexico. Well, it's hard. I think Mexico is one of the most religious places on earth. I do. I think it's like has one of like the highest concentration of religious people anywhere in the world. So this is probably tough for his mom. The pain, including periods of depression and suicide attempt. Suicide? Oh my goodness. Propelled Atlas forward. He deal he still deals with anxiety though. I knew that it was going to be really hard to make her proud now. I knew that I wasn't going to do it in a month or two months, even a year. I knew that I wasn't going to make her proud until I did something with my life, until I accomplished something big. Now, I have a lot more respect for him now because it would have been really easy and really on brand for people who are gay activists or um, people who are um, into that stuff to really just kind of shit on his mom to be like, well, you know, that's just kind of what they do. And a lot of people, uh, they talk about how their parents treated, mistreated them after they came out and stuff like that. And it's just a, a, a session of, you know, how can, how ignorant our parents are and how, but in this situation, the respect level for me is all about he sees now that he's kind of behind the eight ball, that he, he, he is something that he cannot help and that his mom is disappointed 
but he still needs that 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 satisfaction of her knowing that he is not just gay that he is also going to do other things that he used that disappointment to focus him towards a positive goal instead of wallowing and saying woe is me uh my mom hates me or whatever the case may be and then going on the internet talking about how much my mom hates me you know so i can appreciate this and sometimes when people get in situations you know and it, is, it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be being gay sometimes when you go to when you go to jail your parents are super disappointed in you and you have to overcome that. There's going to be a story I'm going to do. Um, I'm not sure when it's going to be done, but it's going to be a story um, about our truth who is essentially is in the same situation. He went to, he went to jail so many times that his parents were just kind of like, well, his mom was kind of like supremely disappointed in him, you know, because and so it's not just about being gay. It's about, you know, not being what they want you to be. Or living the life that they uh, imagined that you would live, and your parents sometimes, you know, they sometimes that shit weighs on you, and I can understand that. And sometimes when your parents are disappointed in you, it does refocus you. If you're the right kind of person, it refocuses you. If you're like supremely selfish, you'll just cut your parents off and be like, "You didn't just take me how I am." Instead of okay, you have you're gonna accept me how I am regardless, but I'm going to give you other reasons to be proud and to be happy that you that you are in my life and that you birthed me. So let's get back to the story after that soliloquy. He dropped out of college and began wrestling professionally while still working part time in 2018, but he wanted to do it as an out gay man. He came out very publicly on Twitter, which led to thousands of negative and positive comments. He recounts. It was scary and difficult to go into this head first, but there was no other way. So Jake Atlas was uh, called, well, he was, he won a uh, rookie of the year. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what this means, but he came out in on January 25th, 2018 on Twitter. Says, I'm proud to be the first openly gay Southern California Rookie of the Year. So that was something. That sure was something. He was signed to the WWE in 2009 as an NXT superstar. And this year he made his debut in the ring. He lost his first match, but he knows he's still winning. That's due in part to the shoulders he's standing on outside of the ring. Now, I remember when he debuted. I made a video about Jake Atlas's debut. And they're not being, and there were so many people. Your favorite wrestling journalists, quite a few of them, and your favorite podcasters and talking heads on Twitter who have thousands of followers were really, really mad that Jake Atlas was not talking about being gay. That it was not the first thing that came out of anybody's mouth. He should have just come on WWE TV and say, hey, I'm gay. Oh, yeah, my name is Jake Atlas. That's really what they wanted. What they got was a guy who was introduced just like every other wrestler. And talked about his motivations. And then he went out there and he wrestled. Had a pretty decent match. Okay. Now there, there is another. Um, more famous wrestling journalist. Who was quoted in books and things like that. Who swore up and down. Swore. Just swore on a stack of Bibles. That Jake Atlas would have been a superstar. If he just signed to AEW. Because apparently there are no gay people on AEW's locker room. Uh, in locker room apparently. Um, but. That's kind of foolish because how would you know that? Like, <laughs> whatever. But the, the bottom line is this. I think this is the best way to handle somebody being something. You, you introduce them as a wrestler first and then you get to know them personally. So people can be like, oh, I didn't know this guy was gay, but he's dope. So who cares? But let's continue the story. Sonya Deville was one of the first superstars that reached out to me. He tells people. Atlas knew her through his own TV screen as the first out lesbian wrestler in the league. We have been able to get closer and understand each other. And like, we're both here, you know, I have your back. We have my back. All right. The other person holding him up, his mother. So he eventually won his mom over. Okay. We've now had countless conversations, he says. So I'm guessing they didn't have conversations before. Whatever. But I'm pretty sure that his mom was pretty mad. I'm always educating her. I'm always trying to understand her as well. I think that's the important part about acceptance, understanding each other. 
so that we can find that common ground, then we can move forward together and progress together. All right, this is pretty, this is real Frosted Flakes. Well, I guess you could say Corn Flakes is really bland. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that he's able to, he feels comfortable coming out. I know during the days of Chris Canyon, it wasn't that, it wasn't that easy. But um, to 2020, that's the one positive thing about 2020 is people are a lot more into shrugging about, you know, like who cares if this dude is gay or not? Who cares what he is? You know, I, but I do find it very awkward that nobody cares that he's Mexican. Like, I don't know why that's bothering me. It's like nobody cares that he's Hispanic. Like, <laughs> like there was a time where that alone would be front page news. But um, I like I like the approach. You know, it's a very subtle approach. You treat him like a human being, not like a placard. You don't, you know, throw rainbow flags all over him and then call him like the gay warrior or some shit. You just introduce him as a, a wrestler like everybody else. You add to him as you go along. Like, I think he's kind of plain right now. He kind of has the, the sparkly jacket, and that's pretty much it. But, you know, over time, he's going to grow into who he, who he's going to become. He's in his pupil stage right now. You know, he just did the Cruiserweight Tournament. He kind of has a storyline going with Drake Maverick, kind of. But you, you, you grow from there. You don't just give everybody, oh, hey, I'm gay. You know, and I'm super gay and yeah, here's me being gay. It's like, no, man, show me what you can do. I don't like his finish though. Now I, I did, his finish is the cartwheel DDT thing from the top rope. Now I didn't mind it the first time I saw it, but then I started seeing it again and I started seeing it like, it was kind of like the 619 where you just kind of, you just happen to get into this position and you're in this position forever waiting for him to do a cartwheel. And into into the DDT, but other than that, I don't have a problem with Drake, uh, uh, Jake Atlas. He's a pretty good wrestler, pretty solid. You know, um, he's a little short, but he's a little short and a little small. But he's in the cruiserweight division right now. Maybe he'll, you know, um, maybe things will change as far as his look and things like that will concern. He's he has to grow. You know, he's starting somewhere. He has to grow, and he got time. He's only twenty five, so. Kudos to Jake Atlas for coming out and saying, oh, yeah, well, I want to be known as being a good wrestler and not being the gay wrestler. That's that's important to me as a fan. Um, I don't know how gay fans feel about it, but I don't really care because ultimately it's all about him. It's not about me or my reaction to it. It's all about how, how comfortable he feels being gay in in the WWE. And I hope that he doesn't face any bullshit about it. You know, and he and he's might because look, we live in the world. Let's go back to back to the canyon situation. That people will make fun of you for literally anything. They will make fun of you for being straight. They will make fun of you for being gay. They will make fun of you for having straight teeth. They will make fun of you for having crooked teeth. They'll make fun of you for being poor. They'll make fun of you for being rich. They'll make fun of you for being black. They'll make fun of you for being white. They'll make fun of you for being mixed. There is no look. I grew up in the hood. There is nothing when it comes to playing the dozens or roasting or bullying or anything. There is no escape. There is no escape. <laughs> there is no escape. We made fun of rich kids. We made fun of poor kids. We made fun of kids who didn't have money. We made fun of kids who always had money. It didn't matter, you know, and that stuff doesn't really just go away. You know, we, we think that it does and people grow out of it, but they don't, you know, people, it, it, this shit is, it stays. It, it just levels off. And as an adult, you kind of, talk to your friends more than you fuck with this actual person. But I hope that um, Jake Atlas does well. You know, hopefully we won't have to keep doing videos on him being gay. This is the second one, but this is the one that I feel more comfortable doing because, you know, I didn't want him to be a placard and to be about the super, you know, the big, you know, the super gay dude. He just wants to be considered a wrestler. I will treat him like a wrestler. That's the, that's the best compromise I can do. What do you guys think? Do you like Jake Atlas? You've probably seen him a couple of times if you watched NXT. Uh, what do you think of him? Did you watch him in PWG? I know some other people did. I don't watch PWG, so I don't, I don't. I didn't see him until he showed up on NXT. So let me know in the comment section. I'll talk to you guys later.